So they said, really we do not see except that our gods have afflicted you with evil and then he, meaning that our gods have afflicted you and your mind has gone and you know this in this manner this is what they mean, that this is what, what has happened to you. And so what did, what did Hud reply? Hud replied, verily I call Allah as a witness and I ask you to witness that I am free from that which you associate as partners in the worship of Allah. Associate, associate others besides him as partners in worship. I'm free from that. So therefore plot all of you together. All of you just plot whatever you want and then don't, don't, don't hesitate, don't wait. And the Shaykh, Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan says that this is a threat here, this is a challenge from a single person, which is Hud, who is threatening or he's challenging a whole Ummah, a whole Ummah. And this is, the Shaykh says that this is one of the uh, miraculous affairs. Hud challenging the whole of this Ummah. And then he said after this, إِنِّي تَوَكَّلْتُ عَلَى اللَّهِ رَبِّي وَرَبُّكُمْ رَبِّي وَرَبِّكُمْ مَا مِنْ دَابَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ آخِذٌ بِنَاسِيَتِهَا إِنَّ رَبِّي عَلَى سِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ So, he said, Verily, I rely upon Allah, who is my Lord and your Lord. There is no creature except that Allah takes it by its fall off. And verily, my Lord is upon a straight, straight path. So he first of all announced his free, you know, the, the fact that he's free from them. He made his bara'a from them and from what they worship besides Allah. And then he challenged them, the whole of that ummah, the whole of that nation. He challenged them, this nation which worshipped uh, other, than, other, than, other than Allah, that he challenged them that they should plot against him. And that they should try to bring this evil towards him if they are, if they are so capable. And then he said, at the end, إِنِّي تَوَكَّلْتُ عَلَى اللَّهِ رَبِّي وَرَبُّكُمْ Right, so meaning, how, why, why did he make this challenge? Because he himself was someone who relied upon Allah and had to work upon Allah and Allah, he knows Allah is his Lord and their Lord so he doesn't see them in, in the least. And in a similar manner, the mushrikun, they said to uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, uh, they said the same thing to him, what the people of Hud said to Hud. Um, and this is why Allah subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِكَافٍ عَبْدَهُ أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِكَافٍ عَبْدَهُ وَيُخَوِّفُونَكَ بِالَّذِينَ مِنْ دُونِهِ Is not Allah sufficient for his servant? Yet they try to make you fearful of that which is besides him. Right? So the mushrikun did exactly the same thing. They tried to make the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fearful of their gods, those gods that they worship besides Allah. And so Allah then refuted them and responded to them by saying, أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِكَافٍ عَبْدَهُ Is not Allah sufficient for his servant? So this shows that this is a type of khawf which is called khawf al-sir, the, the secret inward fear, the secret inner fear. And this is the khawf of ibadah. And this is the khawf of ibadah. This is the khawf, it's a type of fear, which is a fear that comprises worship. So for example, a person, he fears those things which are worshipped besides Allah, such as uh, you know, idols and so on and so forth, and this is how it is. But a believer, he doesn't fear any of these things. He never fears any of these, any of these things. He doesn't fear any idols, he doesn't fear these graves or these statues which are worshipped besides Allah. He doesn't fear the shiateen or the jinn, you know, he, he's not fearful that they might afflict him with evil unless it is by Allah's permission and likewise you know he doesn't fear he doesn't fear all of the creation, he doesn't have this fear uh, he doesn't fear that the the created beings that they might afflict him with something which only Allah has control over like for example a disease or cutting off of the, 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 the sustenance or other such things so this type of fear that a person feels in his heart, this is one of the types of fear, and this type of fear is such that it would nullify his, the, 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 the belief in uh, monotheism and tawheed. And this is when a person, he has fear of something in which no one has the control except Allah. Right? So that's a type of fear that would nullify uh, his monotheism. So for example, a person would fear that 
uh, an idol or a statue or let's say a saint who is buried in the grave that if he doesn't pay homage to them, if he doesn't worship them that as a result of that he will become ill or that he will lose something from his wealth or that some calamity will befall him so here this is an instance of where the fear that's in his heart is a fear which is the fear of something or the fear of someone in something in which only Allah has control over right? so only Allah has control over life and death and sustenance and illness and disease and so on and so forth so now a person when he fears something besides Allah in those things in which only Allah has control over this is a type of fear that is absolutely prohibited and it's a type of fear that would negate a person's uh, Islam and would expel him from, from the fold of Islam so this is what we call uh, in Arabic khawf al sir the, the, the secret inward fear and this fear is prohibited and the, sh- the shaykh gives an illustration he says that you see many people today who are the, the worshippers of the graves these people who worship the saints and they worship these graves and what you find is that the people who are basically if you like the the keepers of these graves uh, you, you find that you know, they often say that if you don't worship or pay homage to this saint who is buried in this grave and if you don't humbly, humble yourself to him, if you don't pay homage to him, if you don't worship him then what will happen is that you will become afflicted with a calamity by either in yourself or in your child, your offspring and in this manner you find that the ignorant people who don't know any better they, they are affected by this fear mongering and they then start to pay homage to these graves, so they travel to these graves or where these so-called saints are buried and then they start performing acts of worship which are directed to these graves and they start and in, in, in this manner this, this is how it happens but you find that the real intent behind the, you know, the, 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 these people who worship the graves and these, the, these people who are the keepers of the, of the graves so to speak is really just to consume the wealth of the people in falsehood they just want to take the wealth of the people and this is all like, uh, as the Sheikh says, it's just like a, a deception and a plot and they're saying that you know, if you don't worship these graves, if you don't respect the people in these graves and you don't come and you know, present, you know, make offerings from your wealth and from your money and whatever else then you know, you'll start seeing calamities, you'll start seeing these illnesses and this is all deception and lies and falsehood and it's just one of the ways in which these evil people they, they, they try to uh, they confiscate the wealth of the people and steal the wealth of the people and it's just trade and nothing else and this, this is how unfortunately you see a lot of, a lot of this happens a lot of this happens in many uh, different uh, places and you know so they make these claims that if you don't try to seek to be near to these uh, saints then you know you, you, your wealth will decline and your you know the, 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 the like your tillage that you've planted will decline and your offspring will, 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 will be afflicted and all these claims and this fear mongering and in this manner the ignorant people who don't know any better they're affected and then they you know come and make these offerings and they come and worship these uh, saints and so on and so forth and at the same time you find that these people are just dividing the wealth that they acquire as a result of it amongst themselves when you find it, it happens in a lot, a lot of the Muslim countries and you even find it happens in the non-Muslim countries where you have you know certain places for example where um, you know maybe someone made a claim that uh, Mary or Maryam al Islam was claimed to have been seen or in some place where the statue uh, blood came from a statue or something and you have it, you have it happening all over the place and in reality this is all just falsehood and it's just a means by which pe- you know the, the wealth is taken from, from, from you know from the people and the Sheikh says that this type of evil this type of uh, falsehood has always been present from from the beginning and it will always remain it will always remain till, till the end of time right? this type of activity and this is the way of the people who worship other things besides Allah you know, they worship other things besides the one true uh, creator and this is how it is with them and this is what you find amongst them and then the Sheikh says that as for the people of Iman people who have, who have a firm belief in the, in the oneness in the, you know, the uniqueness of, 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 of God of Allah do not fear anything or anyone except Allah the Most High because they acknowledge and they know that the absolute source of benefit and 
हाँ 